Thank you so much for checking out this free video. If you don't mind, please click like and subscribe. Your main event is Randy Savage versus Bruno San Martino. It's a fun match. It was awesome. San Martino only has two moves. Yep. K kick and punch. Kick and punch. Yes. Running kick. Running punch. Yes. And he had a different one, which I thought was so fascinating. He's getting his ass kicked for, like, this is the, the simplest match. They, there's no way they called anything in the back. Oh, no. The match starts, and Bruno just punches and kicks him for, like, five minutes. Then Savage gets the heat, and he beats him up for, like, five minutes. And then, do you know how Bruno starts his comeback? He fucking reaches up and rakes Randy Savage's eyeballs with his fingernails. <laughs> Total heel. And then Savage, ah! And then he makes a big comeback. And, you know, I, I think it was just like, remember Hogan used to always do that too? He'd do back oh, Hogan cheated like do, crazy. Yep. Yeah, and I, I think that, like, you watch it and you think it's like a heel move. But really, like, the fans went fucking crazy because Savage is a heel. And he was cheating and he was cheating and he was cheating. And finally, you know, Bruno had had enough, and he raked this fucker's eyes, and people went nuts. Yeah. Like, you know what? He deserved it! Yes. And they went crazy for the guy. It, it worked because you had guys like Tito Santana and Rick Martel in the undercard and R Ricky Steamboat who would never cheat. Yes. Got like a cl closest punch. So after three hours of watching the heels cheat and get away with it, Hulk Hogan comes out. He's a chaotic, good wrestling champion, and he's raking the eyes and biting and all this. Yeah. And people are so happy. They've seen someone fight fire with fire. So this match was awesome while it lasted. Didn't last terribly long. I don't know, seven or eight minutes. Much little shorter than Lanny Poffo got more time with the Red Fucking Demon than Randy Savage and Bruno Sermentino. If Bruno here, uh, I don't know if you guys looked it up. Do you, would you guess how old he was? Bruno? Yeah. 57. What year was this? 87? 87. I would say that he was uh, 52. Very close. He was 51. 51. So barely any older than Adam Copeland is right now. That is actually hard to believe. Younger than Chris he's, Jericho. He's two years older than me right now. Yes. <laughs> That's a strong point. Yeah. And uh, looking at him and... I'm older than he is. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, starts off, he doesn't look too aged. I mean, he looks great. He's still a big burly guy who would kick and punch you to death. But uh, as the match goes on and his hair stops being slicked back, the hair he has left is salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. He has a giant bald spot. And uh, when it gets the action gets real, real hot and hairy, his hair is sticking out to either side like wings. It's like Wolverine's mask, and then he looks very, very, very old there. Yeah. But uh, uh, if he just shaved his head, he would have been fine. Yeah. And uh, the finish is they bonk heads. The action spills outside. The ref is counting them both out. Bruno Sammartino tries to get back into the ring when Randy Savage picks up a steel chair and wonks him right in the back. Yeah. Mm. In front of the referee. He was just sitting there counting. I was like, okay, well, got to get out of this some way. Let's do a shitty DQ. But he fucking whacks this guy. And Savage rolls into the ring and wins. The ref mm -hmm. kept counting out. I was like, what a fucking bullshit. And it wasn't Danny Davis. No. It was some rando. It was like, what the fuck? Yeah, that was bullshit. That was complete bullshit, that finish. So uh, afterwards, Bruno locks in the bear hug of doom on Randy Savage. He's too strong, too enraged. The referees can't pull him off. Finally, you get the U.S. Express and the Islanders and Corporal Kirshner and Scotty McGee. Yeah. They mentioned him by name. It yeah. was awesome because he put this bear hug on, and the storyline was, this man is so strong, five men cannot break his bear hug grip. And they're all yanking at his arms, and they're on the, there's like a pile of like 85 guys. And he hugs this guy for like five minutes, and finally he lets go, and they carry Savage out like his ribs are all busted. And man, this place was going nuts for Bruno. And you could see in the background, it's, it's had to be MSG. They had, uh, uh, like, the way in the background when they would do a long shot, there's a big screen, and it just had Bruno in all capital letters on it. Bruno! Everyone's all happy. This was this, Boston Garden. This was an excellent happy ending for this year. Yes, yes. So my favorite part about all this is they finally, they finally release Bruno's powerful arms from Savage's waist, and once it's done, all the baby faces back up because Bruno's still enraged and he's a dangerous man and they don't want to fuck with him. And eventually he calms himself down and they all leave him in the ring. That's all done. So we go back to Grill and Bobby. Now before you do that, I want to say one thing about this post match. Okay. If you liked this even a little. 
then you must go watch Monday Night Raw last night. Mm. Watch the CM Punk segment with Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre and the post-match where Seth gets attacked by Bronson Reed. I swear to God, this is the greatest post-match monster heel beating in years. Years, I would go as far as to say. You must, and it was very much like this, but like a million times better. So go watch that on Raw. It will be, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. So uh, Gorilla and Bobby have a couple more segments here. Gorilla is, uh, again, avoiding his pick until the last second. Uh, Bobby says, it doesn't matter. Andre and I have mentally whipped this poor beast. <laughs> poor beast is how we describe Hulk Hogan. So finally, Gorilla's, the music is playing. The graphics have started. Gorilla says, next week on primetime, Hulk Hogan will reply to Andre's challenge. And if the match is happening, I pick the holster. So he said because hey but you could barely hear it because they had started the music yeah bobby's talking over him like literally bobby asked all night what his pick was and when gorilla finally said his his pick bobby just talked right over him and they went to the uh yeah. the graphics and he still by the way says if the match happens perhaps hulk hogan will say no well that is we got to find out next week if he's going to say yes or no it is week. his his long his longest his 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 the god of wrestling that got him into this business he called him so, yes. We did, in fact, by popular demand, watch Ready to Rumble. The champion is some fat loser. Yeah, he's a completely talentless, no athletic ability, can't wrestle, it, broke bum that walked out on his wife and kid. But he and was he's over. He's the it, world champion. It and was in the he, movie. The well, yeah, but that's is, a microcosm of wrestling, sadly. Yes. He feels so bad about drinking this entire slushy that costs a dollar twenty six, and he he sticks his finger in his asshole, and walks up to the clerk. Lance and, Lance is dying. How could the movie be so bad? I'm not going to fault the man for that. Of all the things in the movie, I thought okay. for sure you were going to say you'd done this before. There's a reason I'm not going to fault the man for that. I, I just think with all the porta potties and farting in this that I think Vince McMahon was a secret uh, producer on this film, had to have been. So then we get the, the Shermanator. He's playing a WCW arcade game. He uses some internet sleuthing to find the personal information of Jimmy King. He's searching the internet. Can find out anything on here. This movie is so antiquated. Every Nitro Girl is in a Nitro Girl outfit, except for this girl. And they had they her dance in something to totally different. Out, Brian, like the captain. So we're so stupid. I got it. Captain yes, Stabbing? Yes, if you're watching this film, you're that stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I was also insulted by the fact they hired Michael Buffer to announce the Royal Bash, the fake-ass Royal Bash. $24 million budget. Wow. And probably 500000 of that went to Michael Buffer. It made 12. You know, we he should unveils. mention, this This cage match is the triple-decker cage of doom. Everybody buried it. It was horrible. Everybody hated it. And, uh, and so they decided to make a movie. And what is the final battle? It's another goddamn triple-decker cage match. This would be like in, in 2010 if, like, TNA made a movie and the final, the final match was a reverse battle royal. They throw powder in someone's face, DDPs, I think, or somebody's. And the dude just looks at him and goes, it doesn't work. And it's like, of course, because wrestling's fake and stupid. Should we just end it there? What a, what a sound bite. There has never been a movie I have watched in my entire life, which has made me hate myself more. Wow. I'm ashamed that I'm even in the place at 41 years old where I would end up reviewing this movie for money. I would have thought I would have made it out of here by now. You know what I mean? I'm done. Well, everyone, hopefully we can do this again someday. Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe.